Hey guys, so in my video on the easy example, what I did was I talked about how if you only have one critical point, that there's a technique for determining whether it's actually a local max or a local min. And that technique, as I mentioned, was called the bordered Hessian technique. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use the bordered Hessian technique. And it's basically very similar to using the second derivative test if you're, you know, if you've taken single variable calculus. So let's just see how this goes. Alright, so your problem, just some aspects of the problem that are important is we're optimizing a function x, y and has two variables and we only have one constraint. So, you know, in optimization problems it's possible to have multiple constraint functions. It's possible for your functions to be in several variables, more than just two variables. And if that's the case, then your technique is going to be slightly different. So it'll just be tweaking the details, but the, the initial idea is very similar. So we're going to see how, to, how you do it with two variables and one constraint. All right, so step one, you define the Lagrangian equation. So the Lagrangian equation or function is going to be your optimizer function minus lambda times the constraint minus c. Now I just want to point out something. Over here where we have the constraint minus c, well, if x and y satisfies this constraint, then the constraint minus c is just 0. And lambda times 0 is still 0. So really, if you think about it, this is just 0 when your points satisfy the constraint. So for all values that satisfy the constraint, this Lagrangian function is really no different from your actual optimizer function. Now step two is constructing what's called the bordered Hessian matrix. So the bordered Hessian matrix, well you've got your Lagrangian function and we take the second partials, but we don't include lambda in the second partials, and then we just give it this border with the first partials of the constraint. So nothing too crazy here. Now the second step is, or the third step, is we evaluate this function, this matrix at the critical point. So this matrix that we get, well these are just partial derivatives, so these are functions. They might be actual constant values, but most of the time they'll be actual functions. So what we do then is we take our critical point and we evaluate it into each of these functions. And then we find the determinant of this matrix once we've got it as an actual matrix of values, a constant. So we're going to call this the determinant of BH for detection, and that's evaluated at the, at the critical point. And now the final step is you have to look at the determinant. So if the determinant is less than zero, then our point is a local minimum. If the determinant is greater than zero, then our point is a local maximum. So as you can see, this is very similar to the second derivative test. The only difference is that we actually have we actually flip the inequalities in the second derivative test. All right. So now let's just look at the example again. So if you remember the easy example, it was finding the maximum possible product of two numbers given that their sum is 20. And I'll leave a link to this problem below and I'll also leave it at the end of the video if you want to just review that. But in that problem what we found was that this occurs when x equals 10 and y equals 10. So then I just went back and solved for lambda and lambda also equals 10. So this is the critical point that we want to test out. And we want to know whether this is a local maximum or a local minimum. Because this was the only critical point that we found. And if we only have one critical point, then we know that if it's a local max, then it's also going to be where the global maximum occurs. And same thing if it's a local minimum, that's also going to be where the global minimum occurs. So let's just do step one. Step one is calculating the Lagrangian. So I just plugged in the product function over here and then the constraint minus the, the value 20. Now I calculated this matrix. So we've got a zero. Now the, the first derivative with respect to x of g of xy is one. The first derivative with respect to y is also one. And then again we have one, one down here. Now over here you can take these second partials, um, you know, derivative of xy with respect to x, x, 
is 0, and then with respect to xy, you get 1, and then finally 0. So th these you can confirm for yourself, but hopefully calculating the second partials are not too bad. And notice that we actually already got constants. The entire matrix is constant. But it, that's just because our functions are very simple. Many times you'll get some function in terms of lambda, maybe over here and over here. So it won't always just be constants. Now step three, we actually evaluate this matrix at the point 10, 10, 10. So what I mean is you treat each of these as if they were functions. And then you plug in the point 10, 10, 10. But in this case, because they're all constants, plugging in the point 10, 10, 10 doesn't change your matrix. So what this really means is, regardless of what critical point we have found, this matrix would still be the same. Now we compute the determinant, which is 2. And this is greater than 0. So what this means is that our critical point is a local maximum. And that's what we had discovered in the original problem as well. And this is our only critical point. So that means that this solution is actually the global maximum. So the global maximum, or the maximum product, does occur when x equals 10 and y equals 10. So the maximum product is 100. All right, so that's all for this problem. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you want to see more of these videos, hit the subscribe button and like the video. And also, if you found this useful, Share it with your classmates who are also learning this topic. That's all for today, and thanks for watching, guys. See ya.